Hi everybody, welcome back to my blog Edis English Literature. I am Ardhan Dutte. Today we are going to read Thomas Hardy's beautiful poem The Darkening Thas. We all know Thomas Hardy as a novelist with such of the classics like Far From the Madding Crowd, Days of the Dabar Vedis, where he is giving a realistic picture of the Essex and the England and its people. The grand old man of Victorian era, Thomas Hardy, in fact has been a novelist and a dramatist. His career can be divided into three phases as a novelist, as an epic dramatist, as well as a lyrical poet. Mm, poet. Uh, in fact, in his last phases of his career, he was more concentrating on his poetry. But nowhere, uh, be it in uh, dramas or epic dramas or in novels, uh, there is altogether a lyrical grace present. And that lyrical grace uh, that he exhibited at the end of his career being a poet uh, dedicated himself fully as a poet um, but uh, throughout all of his writing there is a legal hardy can be um, present and um, uh, we cannot uh, we cannot miss uh, that uh, description of Edgar Heath for example uh, from the return of the native which is more a poetic beginning uh, and very attractive for us, the nature, the man, the rustic people, everything is so attractive. So um, uh, life uh, like that of a, a romantic um, a description of the nature, like that of the Northsortian feeling. And uh, that Victorian ethos, the feelings and the Victorian realism, that everything addressed him as a person. So in Hardy's writing, we cannot miss that point that uh, from his no great novels as well as from his lyrical poetry everywhere there we can find out Hardy the man, Hardy the great grand old man of the Victorian era. However, being a, a prose writer, he has the kind of lyrical as well as dramatic as well as narrative quality. There is also a hidden irony, a kind of pessimism um, that are like that of a hidden river flowing underneath. The poem Darkling Thrust, uh, which is um, written uh, about 31st December 1900, and that's the time when it is turning of the century. So, the century which is gone by is called here crops. The beautiful illustration that we find here is Hardy's joy in nature, as well as there is a note of pessimism and that we can find out here. So, this poem is a particularly a balanced one with that of pessimism and there is a kind of optimism hidden also. So, uh, let's begin our poem, Darkling Thas, and read it and uh, try to understand it, what it means to us as well as what is Hardy's purpose of stating in this poem. The Darkling Thas uh, is Hardy's tribute of the passing century and the usuring in of a new one. Uh, the whole of the poem, there is a, a brevity and there is a vivid descriptive art that makes uh, this Hardy's poem a masterpiece. The poem, as I have already told it, that was composed on 31st December 1900, the last day of the 19th century. And uh, it expresses the poet's pessimism as well as a hidden underneath of optimism for the coming generation. The end of the 19th century, 
the poet is somewhat listless and in this time in this transitional period the poet's mind also adds a central thought that gives a particular message that he understands from um, the crops of the last century or the ganbai century and there is a hidden bard or a hidden voice uh, like that of phoenix that um, pops up in his mind a message for the future generation a message for the coming days so the poem that uh, is a kind of a um, bleak winter written as the december goes um, the dusk and the closing of the era everything and there is a sense of gloom and uh, the sudden outburst in contrast in the nature the cry of the thrush bird is undistinguished the look of the bird but it is a kind of a ray of hope for the future generation where the poet finds um, having a bright future ahead instead uh, the gloom atmosphere that he can uh, find in front of his um, vivid scenes that he describes in his poem the darling trust <laughs> the poem begins the poet finds uh, an a de- desolate winter scene at the close of the day people living nearby had retired indoors there was frost which was pale as ghost the the weather of the winter and that is swing through its covered snows and the sun has already set on the western horizon the stems of the pine trees has already reached the sky each and every member of the society uh, each and every member of the society that were in earnest quest for their domestic entertainments and the poet is just at that moment lint up on the gate and that very scene is quite um, a dejected one desolate one as the winter landscape is nothing lively nothing appreciable or nothing fruitful with the desert i lint up on a coffee gate when frost was spectra gay and winter's drakes made desolate the weakening eye of day the poet is in front of his house of coffee's gate and the frozen frost has become great scholar as the day is ending the winter's drakes made desolate the weakening eye of the day so the dregs um, or the outcome of the winter or this sum total of winter's production there is the snow the chilling weather and everything desolate and dejected the very aspects of the winter has made the day or the end of the day or the evening of the day that is the weakening eye of the day that is the setting sun has made it more dejected dusky as well as he also sees the tangled bind stems coat the sky like strings of broken lyres as a musician had its music playing never broke its lyres but the winter the desolate winter is like that of a singer who has just broken the lyres and the strings are not producing any music but a scattered noises the bind stems that is a creeper trees or a creeper plant that is entangled 
at the gate is reaching to the sky like that of a broken lad. It's simply a scene that tells it that the sweet musics of spring is no more. Rather like that of a broken lad, it has its music broken. And all the mankind that haunted nigh had sought their household fires. So all of the human being, all of the populace, all of the citizens are now busy in their confinement of house. And they are trying to find out something meaningful, something fruitful or something to survive in this chilling winter a kind of a entertainment that it represents to the fire. So the mankind here represents the humanity is all in searching of some aspects of meaningfulness of this life as this dejected winter scene of the last day of the last century that is 19th century is nothing so appreciable, nothing so appreciating, nothing so fruitful or nothing so attractive to the poor. So the second stanza it leads to the land sharp features seem to be the century's corpse outlined, the very dejected and desolate scene of this winter is like that of a death. It is like the crops of the last century has gripped the cloudy canopy the wind his death lament, the ancient pulse of German bard was shrunken, hard and dry, and empty spirit upon earth seemed favorless as I. The poet says, the very dejected winter scene is like that of a tome of 19th century. There is cloudy canopy, the open sky, the wind is death lament, the chilling winter wind, north wind, and that is so piercing, is like the death lament. The ancient pulse of charm and bard was shrunk and hard and dry. The pulsation of life, that is the ancient one, the old one, the creativity, is sunk and hard and dry. It is like that of an insipid and tasteless and uh, in the situation of stupor death. In this chilling wintry there is no possibility even of a simplest germ to germinate. So the life is akin to death and the very spirit upon earth seems powerless as I the poet's own mind is dejected. He seems to be powerless. Nothing appreciable, nothing productive, nothing creative. And the very spirit that he looks upon, that he search upon the earth, is also spiritless. So the entire first and second stanza that thus leads us into the pessimistic note of a winter scene that is akin to livelessness or uh, sorrow state of affairs of humanity and the very scene is also being compared to be the death body of the last century that is 19th century. Next two stanzas, the third and fourth is like that of a very counter of the first two stanzas and very contrasting one. Where in the first two stanzas we will find pessimistic note, in the next two stanzas we will find an optimistic note, a stern message, a robust message from the poet's end for the coming century with hope, prosperity and greater humanism. Here the darkling thus also has a chilling effect of pessimistic note. But underneath the last two stanza of the darling thus we will find out a kind of a poise, a kind of a poetic uh, acclaim of something newer, something hopeful, something great 
and that uh, the poet the, in his pessimistic note or the somber state of mind cannot find out but a thars a um, bird out of this cold chilling winter has sought after some life and that's the voice through that voice uh, there is a message for humanity so the third stanza it begins at once a voice arose among the bleak twigs over it in a full hearted event song of joy illimited so with unlimited happiness there is a thrush at the very top of the a tree which is full of snow hardly there is any leaves a shrill voice is there and it is full hearted evening song of joyas how he can be of joyful if an aged thas frail gaunt and small his past be ruffled plume when that thas is aged one is just battling to be alive small weak of the hail when all of his feathers are are be ruffled are mingled and with that like by the chilling wind has chosen thus to fling his soul upon the green gloom there is green gloom but instead of singing a gloomy voices he is the outburst of joy that is very contrasting and he sings soulfully he sings from the bottom of his heart so the thrush bird against all odds of the winter is burst into a joyous prospect and that is quite appealing one he is full crust of joy happiness and of a greater and greater in voice of stating the fact that the coming humanity or the coming humanism is of great prospect of love a pillow feeling and of prosperity from all accounts so little cause for carolings of such ecstatic sound was written on terrestrial things afar or nigh around in near or in distance there was nothing written in the daily aspects of natural things there is everything a sorry aspect the scene desolate dejected the destruction decadence and annoying the aspects of the winter everywhere there is chilling winter snow grayness and that is a little cause for such caroling such ecstatic sound such melody and in front of us in front of this earthly things we cannot find out any of the written prospects of humanity or rather if there is something written there is no possibility of a bereaved heart of the poet or a ailing heart of the poet can see it so the dejection or destruction the very scene of the winter that had nothing to make merry the sound of the darling thrush or the poet simply couldn't read it that i could think there tremble through his happy good night air some blazed hope where up he knew and i was unaware so the poet says that the, he thinks there is some good night air that happy good night air or the happy state of humanity of some blazed hope or there is some hope a spiritual as well as physical a hope that survive us or lead us 
to live into the great run of humanity. That blazed hope or that spiritual acclaim or that voice of prosperity and humanism is there. Which the poet thing I cannot think about because we the people, we the man are in dejected mood. In dejected mood, we couldn't find out the ray of hope. Whereof he knew and I was unaware. The poet states simply, the darling thrust, even through his all odds, he is in outburst cry for the new hope, for the new humanism. And the poet says, that in his dejected mood or in his dejected condition, he couldn't be aware of that fact that there is hope or he couldn't find out that hope out of these despairs. But there is definitely a hope that the thrust in its all um, negative aspects of nature can uh, thrill uh, into cries and that cry is uh, the voice of humanity for the coming years. Bard who knows a better prospect of life in coming years, but the poet, he couldn't read that message. Hadi can have a single possibility of hope that through a darling thrust, through a, a thrust bard who is hiding in the dark, might have a message that is a possibility of hope but the thrust which is having that knowledge the poet couldn't have that simple message in him that also a painful realization of the poet so hardy the pessimist as we all know throughout his novels um, can be a a little hopeful here in the darling thrust. I think this simple poem you should read to understand a better way of thinking of Hardy's pessimism particularly and optimism if there is or um, you can also read this poem as a big as a traditional poem uh, during the years. So Hope you have enjoyed this poem. Keep reading and ask me questions if you have any doubts regarding this poem or related things. So stay tuned, like, share, subscribe. Bye-bye.